Hey, good morning, Parkview. It's Saturday morning, and uh, I know I don't usually address you uh, between Sunday and Wednesday, but I wanted to give you a, a quick update this morning as we prepare to come uh, to worship again tomorrow uh, at the church. Uh, just again, to bring you some things that, uh, that might uh, help uh, boost your confidence, and, uh, and I hope it does, especially if you have been awaiting coming back to church, okay? I have in front of me something that I'm going to use as a reference uh, just to kind of tell you what you can expect again, okay? Some of you have already been coming back to, uh, to in-person worship uh, ever since all the, the quarantines and the stay-at-home orders, uh, the safer-at-home orders. And as we're watching things relaxed a little bit uh, more and more each time, uh, there is still a different level of comfort uh, in every person, a different level of confidence uh, in every person uh, about getting out in public uh, at church or wherever the, uh, you might be going. Uh, you've heard me say over the past few weeks that grace is really uh, the number one word that we are going by, and that is we're just going to treat everybody with grace because I realize there are different opinions uh, different ways of gauging uh, levels of comfort as you get in public, as you get next to people, uh, and how you interact, keeping social distancing, and all that sort of thing. Uh, we at Parkview have tried, okay, uh, to accomplish some things that will boost confidence, all right? Now, for those of you who are not worried about anything, uh, you, uh, you go out, uh, social distancing's not all that important to you, you shake hands, you even hug. Uh, let me encourage you right now at this point that the reason I'm sharing this today is, is only so that we could uh, humble ourselves, if that's our belief, if that's your belief, and, and treat others with some kindness and grace and demonstrate to them some things that will boost their confidence and boost their uh, um, desire to want to come back. Uh, in other words, what I'm saying is, is that you and I, you might say, hey, Mike, I want to hug your neck. And I might say, okay, uh, hug my neck. I, I love you. Can't wait to see you and all that. But others may not feel so comfortable. So even biblically speaking, we could choose to humble ourselves so that we can show others, hey, not only is it safe to come back, but we're doing everything we can to bring you back. Here's what you can expect when you come to, uh, to church tomorrow, okay, if you choose to come. When we met with the deacons and Sunday school teachers, we developed a plan, and, and here's what it looks like, okay? For example, when you get into the parking lot, and I'm going to read the names that are on this list, Kathy Klein uh, agreed to be in charge of uh, parking lot greeters. Uh, and so Kathy Klein, not just herself, but others who uh, get on her team, are to greet everybody in the parking lot in, in a way to answer questions and to help direct them uh, either to the worship center or to the youth center and what they can expect, especially if it's their first time uh, at church, okay? And so if you're going to go to one place or the other, they'll help you get uh, to that location. There's a person that we've called on our list, a floater, okay? And Vicki Sandifer is in charge of that. And Vicki and her team as floaters are just out there uh, designed to help out the parking lot greeters and the door greeters that we'll get to in just a moment and go back and forth between the youth center and the worship center uh, in the parking lot to, to direct and to take you, uh, to hold you up if there's too many folks at the door, okay, and, and, just, and just to have conversation with you, socially distanced, all right, uh, if need be, uh, and wait until it's clear to go in. Then there's a door greeter team. Randy Giddings is in charge of that. Now, Randy's not your only door greeter. He puts together a team of people that will be at the youth center door as well as the joiner uh, door. Um, and they are there to welcome you, but also to keep the doors open, okay? Because uh, if at all possible, we're going to try to help you be touch-free if you want to be. If you don't have to go to the restroom or, or whatever, you don't have to touch a door handle, open it, close it. Uh, all that will be prepared for you uh, as the door greeters uh, welcome you. There's also been uh, the Hemden, uh, Hemden Prayer ladies, Christy Gissendainer, uh, and her team uh, are there if you wanted a mask. So if you want a mask, you don't have one, they were going to give out one per person, uh, only one time only. So once you receive a mask, you don't receive another one the next week, but they are there to give you a mask uh, if you would like that. 
and uh, they are there. Uh, and our greeters from Kathy Klein to Vicki Sandifer to Randy Giddings, all those different teams of people can direct you to the place to get the mask that you need. Then I've asked Stephen Parker to head up a, an usher team, okay? And the usher team, uh, they are the ones there designed to help us enter the sanctuary or the youth center properly. And that is, they're going to ask you really to sit yourself from the back forward, okay? And it's just so that, again, we can honor uh, the desires of people and the comfort level of people to not walk past enough or too many people there that might feel uncomfortable, but they're willing to come if we can do these things, okay? And that's a key thing. They're willing to come if we are uh, purposeful on these things. And so Stephen Parker's team, um, they're going to just ask you to try to sit yourself, and they're going to try to help direct you and move you in that direction uh, to, from, to sit from the back forward. Some people might like to be up in the balcony. Uh, the, the door on the street will be open for that uh, as well. And so, uh, again, not just Stephen, but his team will help you with that. Steve Sandifer and uh, Mitch Rowland are heading up our security. So they're just kind of going back and forth, being in the parking lot, watching, keeping their eyes on things, and trying to keep us secure. We even have bathroom attendants, and they are listed on here as well as a part of this uh, team, welcoming team uh, into uh, in-person worship. Brad and Carrie Stevens have agreed to head up that team as well, just to kind of uh, be outside of our bathrooms to keep one person in at a time, okay, and to make sure there's there's just a flow there that is that simple, one at a time, and to, to help out if there's anything missing, if there's anything needed as far as soap or sanitizers. We have multiple sanitizing stations coming in the front door, going into the sanctuary, but again, with doors open, you shouldn't, and maybe, uh, hopefully not have to touch anything. Then Jackie Morris, she and her team, uh, they zap every one of our foreheads. All of us as volunteers, from your praise team to your pastor, okay, and all these other uh, greeters in the parking lot and at doors and ushers. We have these thermometers, and they go around and they zap our foreheads to make sure that we do not have fever, okay? Uh, we do all of those things so that we can try to make you feel more comfortable. Now, again, I know some of you are very comfortable, and you might even be thinking, Mike, this is a waste of a video. And, and, I, and I know you're not, uh, you don't believe that it's a waste necessarily for other people, but you may kind of just sigh and go, you know, we, are we still talking about this? Unfortunately, yes, we are, because the day has not fully gone away. We still have a virus. We still have concerns. And I just want to encourage you, just like I have to myself, hum, uh, humbleness or humility is a choice. And so even though we may feel, somebody else may feel gung-ho and ready and you're healthy as a horse and all that good stuff, why shouldn't everybody else feel like uh, I do? The truth is they don't. And so uh, I implore you church members, because I know you love people. I know you love me. I love you. And I know you love everyone else. Let's do some things to, to uh, prove to everyone else, hey, if you want to come out and worship in person and see other faces and at least communicate six feet apart and so forth, we're going to do some of those things to, um, to help things out and make you feel very comfortable. One other quick description of the job for the usher. Okay, the ushers then, uh, and this is where your pastor's done a terrible job, okay? And your ushers are going to then attempt to dismiss us at the end of the day, okay, in an orderly fashion. Instead of when we say, hey, amen, the final word, the final announcement, and the way we do it, part is typically, we just start mingling, right? We just start fellowshipping, we start coming together, uh, and we're going to uh, dismiss ourselves orderly, a row at a time, and if you want to do that and other people want to do it with you, there's a great big parking lot out there for us to do that uh, in. Again, I share this with you just as an update, as a reminder, as a desire, okay, to be mindful uh, of others coming, wanting some comfort level, and we should give that to them. It is imperative that we give them to, uh, give that to them. I believe it's biblical. Again, humbling ourselves if we don't have different beliefs there and willingly saying to them, hey, I'd rather have you here distanced from me and me being distanced than not having you here. So little by little, I believe more and more folks are going to come back each and every week and each and every, every month, but we're going to remain compliant and just kind to one another. So thank you for giving me about 10 minutes this morning. 
And uh, I hope you have a great day. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have some fun things to share with you as we challenge ourselves with discipleship. God bless y'all today. Have a wonderful Saturday. Bye-bye.